seems like every week we're talking about Roundup resistant weeds because, well, we are talking about Roundup resistant weeds every week. It's one of the most major problems we've got in agriculture today. Well, honestly, every farmer's talking about them all the time, every week, every farm magazine or farm paper you pick up. I mean, there's always an article about how are we going to control these Roundup resistant weeds. And everybody's all worried about this because one product doesn't work on it anymore. Oh, I can't use Roundup anymore. It's like there was never, ever any other chemical <laughs> invented. I mean, there's all kinds of products out there. It's just the timing is so much more fussy than what Roundup has been. I mean, you think about how spoiled we've been since the mid 90s. Oh, I've got a weed. It's two feet tall. Uh, Heck with that, I'm gonna go fishing this week anyway. I'll kill it next week. And you can come back with just a little stronger rate of Roundup and wipe it out. Well now, it doesn't work anymore. So you've gotta be a lot more fussy on your timing in order to get those weeds under control. All right, so here's what we're looking at with this timing thing. And we're gonna talk specifically today about soybeans because that's where we seem to be having the most problem controlling Roundup resistant weeds. When it comes to timing, you've gotta spray when a lot of those weeds are two to four inches tall. That's it. Well, Brian, and you know, honestly, right now, the guys that are having the most problems, where there's weeds across the whole field, are the guys that didn't use a pre. Well, and I, I realize there's nothing yeah. we can do about it now. We can't go back in time. But for next year, you've got to remember this. You've got to use a pre, or probably two, on soybeans now, no matter where you're at in the country, because yeah. Roundup is just not going to work forever. And if you can wipe out most of those tough broadleaf weeds before they're even up, that's the best way. Yeah, and most of our ground, we used three pre-emerge herbicides. And you say, oh my gosh, you spent a fortune. You know what? We spent less than what the value of one bushel of soybeans is in almost all situations. So yeah, we, we spent some money, but we didn't spend that much money. And now we're in really good shape because we don't have a lot of weeds out in the bean field. So let's say that you didn't put a pre-emerge herbicide down. Let's say you've got a whole bunch of weeds coming. I think what we need to focus on is the different combinations you might need to use on your farm so you can get weed control control regardless of the situation. Lambs quarters and water hemp, what do you suggest? All right, so you've What's got your magic small potion? seeded broadleaves. Now, if you want to wipe out both of those small seeded broadleaves, yep. you have to use something like Cobra or Flexstar. Those are the types of products it's, that are going to wipe out both of those small seeded Neither one of them is going to. And that's my whole point, and that's why I was setting you up here, Darren, because you can't kill both lambs quarters and water hemp with one product. Post-emergent soybeans can't be done. <laughs> okay, you can say Flexstar and Cobra, but no way. Neither well, one of them is very good here, on lambs quarters. Here's my thing. If you're if you're talking about a two-inch tall weed, I think you can do okay yeah, with it. that's possible. If you're talking about a four-inch weed, think about how many growing points there are on those small broadleaf weeds. And that's why it's so difficult to get good control. Okay, so if you've got lambs quarters out there, the very best product is Harmony SG, or the generic version would be Harass. Okay, so you put Harass out there, let's say, and you want to mix it with Cobra or Flexstar. Darren, what's that <laughs> going to do to the soybeans. Well, well, it gets a little <laughs> bit warm, Brian, and, and here's the problem. You know, when you think about the conventional soybean days, and for the guys that are still raising conventional beans, we've got to burn those beans a little bit to control some of the toughest weeds if we don't use a good pre-emerge combination. So when we're talking post-emerge, if you say, I want to mix Harass with Cobra or Flexstar, you know what? I don't know if I want to do that because that's going to put a severe burn on those beans, especially yeah, when they're small. Yeah, but if I've got bad lambs quarters and bad water hemp, I don't have a whole lot of choices. The other thing that a lot of guys are doing is they're throwing in warrant post-emerge, or there are some other options that would be similar to warrant. That's just residual. Don't forget, it's just residual, and it's going to give you residual control for later on, and it's not even all that great. I would have much rather had some other product pre-emerge, but warrant is about as good as it's going to get post-emerge, but again, that's just residual. So we're trying to burn down what's there, trying to hopefully control what's gonna come later on as well. Uh, okay, well I look at things just a little bit different, Brian. I start out with my base products and I say, you know what, my base choices are either Pursuit or Raptor, First Rate, or maybe even Bassagrant. So depending on what weeds I've got, those are my three on. first choices. Bassagrant's okay. kind of spendy, and, and it doesn't have residual, I, now, and that's why you don't like it. But I look at those as my three bases. No, right? no way. Flexstar is the base product that I'm going to use. That's got a, a <laughs> that's wider... A helper. That, that's no, a helper. No, it isn't. You're it's got using, a wider spectrum than what Pursuit does. You're using it does 12 have ounces, residual. Though. Yeah, I don't We're talking care. about one inch tall weeds if you're talking <laughs> no, about 12 no. ounces. Two to four inch tall weeds, it's going to be okay. Okay, now this 12 ounce conversation. In some areas of the country, you might be using 16 ounces or even more 
on Flexstar. The problem as we go north is we could have carryover issues with Flexstar, so we don't ever use more than 12 ounces per acre on our own farm. So you have to be real careful with some of these things. It's the same thing with Pursuit, and there are other products where carryover could be a concern. Now that Harass or Harmony SG that we were talking about, that has no residual. But before we get any further, we need to talk just a little bit about adjuvants. And when guys are throwing Flexstar together with Harass, for example, they'll say, well, what should I use for an adjuvant? Well, first of all, the adjuvant package you use is very, very important in terms of leaf burn on the crop. If you use crop oil or methylated seed oil, you'll have a lot more crop response. The flip side is you'll also get a little bit better weed control. So it really depends on what your growing conditions have been lately. If you've had hot and dry, hot and dry, hot and dry leading up to this, you might be able to get by with a crop oil or methylated seed oil because there's a waxy leaf cuticle on your crop that will protect it. If you've had cool and wet, cool and wet, cool and wet leading up to spraying, do not use crop oil or methylated seed oil. So you really have to be working with an agronomist here to figure out what's the right adjuvant depending on the weather conditions that you've got at the time. Well, weather's one thing, but also the health of that crop is another thing. If you have a crop that's under stress, you're much more likely to have some issues with leaf burn. All right, we've talked about a lot of herbicides here, but the important question, Darren, is will any of them control our weed of the week? We'll tell you coming up next. <laughs>